At an archaeological excavation in northern Iraq, Catholic priest and archaeologist Lancaster Marin unearths a medallion of St. Joseph, as well as a statuette representing a demon. As Marin prepares to leave, he sees a large statue of the demon and two dogs fighting. In Georgetown, Washington, D.C., actress Chris McNeil stars in a film directed by her friend Burke Dennings. Chris, along with her 12-year-old daughter Reagan, rents a house with servants. Meanwhile, Father Damien Karras, a psychiatrist who counsels Georgetown University priests, visits his ailing mother in New York. He confides to a colleague that he feels unfit in his role, citing a crisis of faith. The day after moving in, Chris hears noises in the attic, to which Reagan attributes them to her imaginary friend, Captain Howdy, whom she talks to via a Ouija board. In a local church, a statue of Mary is found desecrated. That night, Chris hosts a party with Karis's friend, Father Dyer, who explains Karis's role as counselor, mentioning that his mother died recently. Reagan, seemingly unwell, appears and urinates before Chris comforts her. After she puts Reagan to bed, it begins shaking violently. Dyer consoles Karis, who expresses guilt at not having been with his mother when she died. Karis dreams of his mother, a St. Joseph medallion, and, briefly, a demonic face. Soon after, Reagan's personality becomes violent. She is subjected to several medical tests, which find nothing physically wrong with her. During a house call, Reagan exhibits abnormal strength. One night, Chris finds the house empty except for a sleeping Reagan. Dennings is found dead at the foot of an outdoor staircase beneath Reagan's window. Homicide detective William Kinderman questions Karis, confiding that Denning's head was turned backwards. Reagan's condition worsens as her body becomes covered with sores. A doctor mentions exorcism as a remote option, suggesting a possible psychological benefit. Kinderman visits Chris, explaining that the only plausible explanation for Denning's death is that he was pushed from Reagan's window. As Kinderman leaves, Reagan has another violent fit and stabs her with a crucifix. To Chris's horror, the now-possessed Reagan turns her head backwards and speaks in Denning's voice. Reagan is confined to her bedroom. Chris seeks out Karis, who visits Reagan. Over two meetings, the possessed Reagan claims to be the devil himself, and projectile vomits into Karis's face while speaking in tongues, and reacts violently when tap water is sprinkled on her, which Karis had claimed was holy water, a point against genuine possession. The demon says it will remain in Reagan until she is dead. Desperate, Chris confides that the possessed Reagan killed Dennings. At night, Chris's assistant calls Karis to the house. They witness the words help me materialize on Reagan's skin. Still ambivalent, Karis concludes that an exorcism is warranted. Marin, having performed an exorcism before, is summoned. Marin arrives at the house, warning Karis that the demon attacks psychologically. As the priests read from the Roman ritual, the demon curses them. It focuses on Karis, verbally attacking his loss of faith and his guilt over his mother's death. The priests arrest momentarily and Marin, shaking, takes nitroglycerin. Karis enters the bedroom where the demon appears as his mother, showing weakness Karis exclaims that the demon is not his mother. Marin excuses Karis and continues the exorcism by himself. Karis assures Chris that Regan will not die and re-enters the room, finding Marin dead. Enraged, Karis beats the possessed Regan and demands that the demon take him instead. The demon rips the medallion of Saint Joseph from Karis's neck and begins to possess him, freeing Regan. Karis hurls himself out the window, tumbling down the stairs outside. Chris and Kinderman enter the room. Chris embraces the healed Regan and Kinderman surveys the scene. Outside, Dyer administers the dying Karist last rites. The McNeils prepare to leave and Father Dyer says goodbye. Despite having no memory of her ordeal, Regan, moved by the sight of Dyer's clerical collar, kisses him on the cheek. As the McNeils leave, Chris gives Dyer the medallion found in Regan's room.